Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Star Fox Zero walkthrough. This is Area 3, uh, the key to victory. Uh, we're going to be getting 238 hits to get the gold medal here. And uh, this is a pretty interesting mission. It's, it's got some interesting parts. So at the beginning, uh, we're immediately going to be moving towards this little excursion here with all the, the team in hand. And we're going to be doing some charge shots to clip a few hits here and there. Ooh, there was a laser upgrade. Completely missed that. And we're going to bask in the uh, 60 frames per second glory, which occasionally dips. Quite a lot it dips, but, you know, it's not too bad. And uh, now there's a sequence where it wants us to kill three, I say three, 30 uh, of these enemies. So shoot the popcorn enemies, uh, do whatever you want to do here. You can use a combination of the controller, looking on the tablet thing, and on your TV, or you can go 100% TV, it's up to you. I'm being chased here, so you want to break when people are on your ass like this, and then they generally go past you, and then you can shoot them. If they don't, you can do the loop the loop and you can come back on yourself and get them that way. It's entirely up to you how you want to choose to do that. Now, you'll notice a lot of people are talking on this particular game, but you're not hearing any of it. It's because they chose to do this rather interesting uh, vocals come through the controller. So you're hearing all the commentary that these people are saying through your controller. So it's, it's one of those things where I always play with the controller completely muted, so I never heard any of these conversations, even when I had my TV with volume on, which is a little shameful, I think. Because I think there should perhaps be an option to put it through your television as well. And for all I know, there might have been. But I did look in the sound options and I couldn't see it. So I think it's just one of those design choices that they stuck to. And uh, you either like it or you don't. I find the sound quality coming out of the controller to be low quality sound. It's not the, the best. But we're about up to 54 hits. Pigma's turning up now. And uh, we're going to try and take this dude out. So... My strategies for taking on the uh, the other Star Fox team guys, the Star Wolf team, I think they're called, is you can obviously you can lock onto them. If you have any bombs, when you hold lock on and you fire a bomb, the bomb will lock on. You can also detonate the bomb prematurely by pressing the same button that you disengage the bomb with. This can be good for skillful players to get full control over the bombs. Uh, at this point, this was my second playthrough of the game, so I wasn't very uh, up on using things too well. But you're going to notice that uh, I use bombs and things. I think the best way to damage these guys is to hit them multiple times with these standard lasers. It's the trickiest to do, and you're not going to see me hit this guy too much because I'm doing it on the controller. But just kind of chase him, keep on his tail, and then hit him with as many blasts as you can. If you've got a good trigger finger, you can hit off a ton. If you've got upgraded lasers and you've not been hit, you can also do a lot of damage. And just if you get into that rhythm of keeping your aim on them, you can really stack that damage by just leading your shots and getting creative. You'll also see that I'm a little bit weak on life, but the good thing about this game is you can play better. You know, it, this is a skill-intensive game for in a lot of ways. Like a lot of reviews have said some very harsh things about this game, and I have my criticisms too. There goes Pigma. That's a plus 30 on the hit bonus, so that's a good thing to kill him. They've said that the controls are polygon, unplayable. Guy couldn't finish reviewing this apparently because he said it was unplayable. That was the same guy who couldn't aim for Toffee in Doom, so I just think that that guy needs to get a better profession. Even though he's in the best profession in the world, he just kind of sucks at it. And I see a lot of people defending the fact that that guy can't play for Toffee. And I'm sorry, guys, you wouldn't want to go to a restaurant where the chef couldn't cook for shit, would you? So it's the exact same thing. If you choose a profession, you have to have an affinity towards it and a, a general level of quality. You can't just bullshit your way through it and I appreciate that you can argue that not everybody can be exceptional at everything and I don't think you can but if it's your fucking job you try don't you you don't just record the first thing you you do a few runs and then you get the one that looks the best so you don't look like a tit who can't aim at enemies from five yards using two analogs you know it looks like he passed that controller off to his cat it really does and I, I just that to me is kind of crazy but they've they've been very strict on this uh, some reviewers have said, you know, it's okay, it has its qualities, there's a good game there, it's just hidden behind a lot of nostalgia and some questionable motion controls, and I, I can agree with a lot of these points, but what must be said here, guys, is the more you play this, the better you will get. The more you will understand the shortcomings, the more you will understand the gimmicks to it, and you will get good at using all the things that that Polygon article tells you that doesn't work. And I can guarantee you that the game has been designed in such a way where you can have a lot of success, and you can get very good. I personally 
uh, don't really like this game too much, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. And if I were to review it, I would be as fair as I can because I think there's a lot of quality here and I think there's a lot for people to like. Uh, I just personally feel that Lilac Wars was better and this game is essentially trying to remake Lilac Wars in a lot of ways. That's just my feelings though. And people need to realise that one person's feelings aren't necessarily facts. You know, you've got to to kind of pull yourself out of it a bit. If you ever see me turning sideways like this, it's me trying to boost, but because the gate on the analog on the Wii U controller doesn't have like that octagonal gate anymore, it's a circle, there are these funny moments where I'm holding kind of like up and to the left, so I'll do that weird turn sideways thing. It doesn't happen all the time, but if you're ever wondering why I'm doing that, there's no technique to turning sideways, there's no, you know, elite strat, it's just uh, my inability to use the Wii U controller's analog gates correctly. <laughs> But for this sequence, all I'm doing here is I'm, in a lot of ways I'm wasting time, I'm trying to get stragglers, just so I can get as many hits as I can, I'm squeezing all the hits out here by killing these robots. I'm not too sure if it's better to leave these till the end and come back and hack them, or, or turn into the little car, sorry, and hack them, because we, little car, you know what I mean, the walker thing. Because we can do it now, and I, and I forget that you can do it, because this is New Game Plus technically. But I don't, instead I kill them for the three hits. And I'm conscious that the score here is quite high, so I'm I'm trying to just squeeze every point I can. And it ends up going quite well, but all of this is necessary for this particular run that I make to get me that score. And I don't beat it by the biggest margin, so you need to be aware that some of the scores on this are pretty damn tricky. But there's the laser upgrade. I believe the lasers increase your damage until you take damage. When you take damage, it lowers you back down to the one below. So, it's best if you can uh, to dodge them hits and keep that damage. There might be more to that mechanic than meets the eye, but as I've mentioned, folks, I haven't. I got this the day it came out, I played it for that day, I recorded all of this, and I haven't touched it since, and I've had no motivation to do so. I just didn't enjoy it, guys, that is all. You know, nothing too much against the game, even though I do think it has some issues. But we're coming through the tunnel now. And there's a couple of standard enemies. Uh, hit them with your charge shot. If you can get them to line up, you can get some extra hits. Uh, everything helps. If you have any crazy strats for getting everybody to line up perfectly and get multiple hits every time, you're going to have an easy time getting gold. That's what you want to do. Uh, I'm going to come over here because this is another entrance we could have taken and there's a couple more hits we can squeeze. So a couple dudes just down here. Get your lock on. Do your, dosh your dashes to, to dodge the rounds. You can't do the spinning that you can do in the aerial vehicles, which is essentially invincibility, if you do it right. But you can get those handy little side flips, so you want to use them as best as you can to, to stay mobile, stay deadly. Here comes a tank. I always take little bits of damage before I get my roll off, and I think that's the only problem when you have to, to flick an analogue twice. You know, There's always going to be that delay than there would be from when you press a button, and although it is very slight, it's one of those things you have to adjust to if you want to be successful. You know, you have to be quicker, uh, would be my thought. But I've always felt like that personally when it comes to flicking the right analog for dodging. On God of War, it wasn't so bad, because on God of War, you spent a lot of time blocking, and when you did dodge, it was almost a focused attempt. And you usually, well, if you do what I do, I hold the right analog with my left hand, thumb, reaching over, and then I mash the, is it square, to, to do the, the faster roll. So it was never really much of an issue on that because it was always a desi uh, like a designated effort. But in games like God Hand, where the right analog gives you all those dodges, I always feel like if it was a button, even though I don't know how you'd make that work because there's a bunch of different dodges, but I, I just always felt like having dodge on the analog made that game harder for me as a player. And I think the same rings true in this because when you play a game twice, you've only put in a couple of hours. You don't know that, you know, you don't have that muscle memory yet. You don't have that familiarity with it. So the controls are going to not feel as natural as they would, for instance, if you put two weeks into the game. And those improvements do show, and this is a game where skill will show, so... For all the criticisms it's getting, there is a game here that you can get good at and you can enjoy, guys. So if you're on the fence, try renting it if you can. Try borrowing it off a friend. And see what you think. Because you might love it. Just because there's a lot of people that are saying some very harsh things about this game does not necessarily mean that they're all true, they're all valid, because a lot of them are personal. And we need to bear that in mind. Like, I think this next vehicle is a piece of dog shit. I hate it. Every time I'm in this vehicle, it makes me miserable. 
doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's objectively shitty. It just means that I don't like it. And I think it's objectively shitty, but you know, you might love it. Uh, you've got to always try and judge things for yourself. I think that's one of the things that a lot of modern reviews get kind of skewed in a lot of ways. Some people, I don't know if it's because of ego or arrogance or just because they want you know their review to be successful so they can get more views or something but a lot of people are of the belief that you have to agree with them you know like fans of youtubers agree with people and they and they can be sometimes a little bit trepidatious towards disagreeing with them because they don't want to you know offend somebody that they like if they have a different opinion and i think that's kind of sad in a lot of ways because you're misunderstanding the the purpose of discourse the purpose of the socratic method and you know the reason why things like politics exist and you know things like democracies if you believe in them it's the whole notion that if you have a differing opinion it should be aired and not all opinions are valid it's the same with questions there's there are stupid questions and they're often said by stupid people but um, stupid questions can still have you know some kind of value in them because in a lot of ways you might be helping the ignorance of the person who asked and um, I say this a lot in my commentaries, ignorance is not inherently bad. It's only bad when it's willfully ignored. That's the kind of ignorance that can be very dangerous. And uh, being wrong is the hardest thing on the internet, apparently. It's the thing that nobody wants to be, and everybody wants to argue, and if they don't have a valid point to begin with, they'll go into semantics, or they'll attack your grammar, or they'll just go ad hominem, and, and whatever you choose to do. And, and that's just kind of the nature of the internet, but I do, I do wish reviewers would try and take, and I'm not meaning completely objective in some things, but I would like it if they would intersperse moments of, you know, a lot of people will like X, because it will relate to X, but I felt it was shit, and here's why. Rather than, you know, this game doesn't control well. Wonderful 101. I felt I was fighting the controls. No, you were bad. You are bad. The guy who was on IGN Italy gave it like a 9.8. Said it was a masterful game that took a ton of... It had a quite high skill ceiling. You had to get good at a lot of things, but when it all came together, it was poetry. And that's exactly what it is. But that other review, you know, controls don't work too great. Kept drawing the wrong things. But at no point were they saying, like, you will be able to put in the time and get to the point where all of this flows beautifully... But it's not immediately easy, and it's going to take some mastery, which is both a good and a bad thing. But they didn't say that. They said that the, the reviews were... Uh, the reviews, Jesus. They said that the controls weren't good enough. And I've played games where the controls weren't good enough in a lot of ways, and there will no doubt be moments of the wonderful 101 where I think certain things could have been tweaked, made a bit more accessible. Like, one of the things that bugs me the most about that game is that the lock-on doesn't stay once you initiate it. It's a temporary, short-timed lock-on, and I hate it because it means that you have to be more precise when you're juggling people to get a relaunch. And I was never really good at relaunching, which is one of the reasons I don't do it too much. And it'd be really easy to do if you could initiate a lock-on and keep it until the enemy died. But to do that, you have to keep going back and using your group of people to gangbang them and get them on them, like Pikmin. And it can be tricky to do that. But at no point would I tell you that it can't be done, because there's combo videos on YouTube that I've watched where people are doing it and it's really cool and it's awesome and they're using the lock-on intelligently to get that relaunch and come down in the tombstone and then back up on a juggle and, you know, all kinds of cool videos like that. But you can't go in a review and be, objectively, these controls are bad. Because I can't do them. <laughs> it just makes you look like a poor reviewer. You know, the dude who reviewed God Hand for, for IGN who didn't beat the game. I don't care what that guy thinks about that game. You can't review a game unless you've beat it. You can give a critique of it, but you can't review it. You didn't see it, you know? Maybe the end of it redeemed all the things you hated. But he will never know because he never got that far. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, guys, I'm, I'm leading this gorilla to step on all the things on the ground to squeeze ex every single hit I can get. And then once I've done that, I'm going to fly into this circle and it's going to take us out of the level. Word of warning, if you um, skirt around this teleport and get the monkey to walk into it, you will fail the mission. I thought it would take me to a secret mission. Instead, it just gave me a big dirty failure screen. And you'll notice it said mission complete, it did not say mission accomplished. 
There are multiple ways to finish these levels. Look at that, all three guys got 10 hits, so they had high enough life to give us that bonus 30, and that bonus 30 is literally the reason we did it. Look how close that was, guys. Getting these scores, unless you have really good roots and you're super good at scoring in, in, in the Star Fox games, is not going to be the easiest thing. For the most, you'll get them after one or two attempts, but there are a couple of levels where you're going to really have to to link your shots and play intelligently. But that's a good thing. It breeds replay value and it gives that skill ceiling that extra elevation. But thank you very much for watching and you take care now.